So we're going to talk a little bit today about inflammation and inflammatory markers. There's been a whole lot of discussion in many of uh, our videos and a lot of other places about inflammation causing heart attack and stroke. <clears throat> well, in fact, look at this. Time Magazine 2004, The Secret Killer. The surprising link between inflammation, heart attacks, cancer, Alzheimer's, and other diseases, and what you can do to fight it. So, yeah, I mean, uh, even uh, 20 years ago, you didn't hear a lot of people, especially docs, understanding uh, inflammation, what it meant. I'll just make a quick comment. With all the talk about uh, inflammation, a lot of people still don't know what it means. And it means, in these diseases, the same thing that it means um, in rheumatoid arthritis, the, um, the archetypical inflammatory disease. In rheumatoid arthritis, the, it, it's taking friendly fire. It's our body attacking itself. Uh, the immune system has mechanisms for figuring out how to uh, protect the body. And sometimes it mistakenly recognizes parts of our body as things that uh, need to be attacked. In rheumatoid arthritis, it's attacking part of the joint uh, protein. In uh, lupus erythematosus, system SLE, same thing's happening. Um, in cardiovascular disease, it's attacking something that should be eradicated, uh, plaque. But unfortunately, the process of attacking the plaque creates the problem. And uh, very well may be the issue in a couple of other diseases. So, uh, many of you have read uh, The End of Alzheimer's or are interested in um, Alzheimer's activities. Um, this is Dale Bredesen who wrote the book, End of Alzheimer's, and he's very focused on inflammation. In fact, what I'll do is uh, show you the, the cognitive lab key that he uses. Now, there's a lot of different uh, components to the lab key here. Um, broken down by type of um, type of uh, in, uh, dementia. But what we're focusing on today is the cognitive lab key for uh, inflammation, type 1 dementia, uh, HSCRP, uh, uh, in other words, C-reactive protein, albumin globulin, albumin in uh, total level, IL-6, that's interleukin-6, TNF-alpha, that's uh, tissue necrosis factor alpha, and the omega-6-3 ratio in glutathione. So, again, there are other components to the lab workup on dementia that we're not going to cover right now. We're really talking about inflammation and how we measure it. Well, when we're talking about inflammation and how to measure it, uh, a lot of folks have read this book, too, Beat the Heart Attack Gene. And the first uh, component of evaluating somebody's um, biochemistry in, beating the, in a Baildonine evaluation is looking, of course, at CIMT to see if you have a plaque. But then if you have a plaque, look to see if there's inflammation. Now, how do they look at inflammation? Well, many might say that this is the father of cardiovascular inflammation. It's Paul Ridker. He and a colleague at Brigham and Women's uh, Harvard uh, 20 years ago looking at uh, uh, some studies uh, like WASCOPS, the West of Scotland trials, noticed that... Um, that people got better even if their LDL uh, was increasing when they were taking statins. They came up with an idea that statins were decreasing inflammation and actually turns out to be correct. Now, <clears throat> he recently made inter global news with uh, the Cantos trial. Cantos, uh, he used uh, kenakinumab. Basically, it's one of these heavy-duty, uh, high-dollar uh, anti-inflammatory drugs. It's a quarterly injection. And believe it or not, all it, all it does is anti-inflammation. It 
prevented heart attack and stroke. And cardiologists, especially the standards making cardiologists all over the all over the YouTube, look at the YouTubes and you'll see them say, dang, you know what, that caught me flat footed. I knew it was an issue, inflammation in terms of heart attack, but I really did not know how to, I mean, I didn't expect this. Uh, the maker, I can't remember the name of the maker of that uh, can at Kenyabab right now, but they're going to go ahead and try to get a, uh, an indication of uh, giving that injection to prevent heart attack and stroke. I think they've got a long putt to get there because um, they gave up, the Kenya Kenyamab gave up as many lives in uh, the major side effect you see with these heavy duty anti-cancer, anti-inflammatory drugs, increased serious infection. So again, there's a lot going on and a lot of people have different views of how to deal with inflammation. And again, it's so mainstream that even Time Magazine put it on, on its cover uh, 13 years ago. <clears throat> now, what do we do? Let me just go back and draw some, and get a little bit more detailed in terms of the panel, the inflammation panel, uh, uh, Bredesen versus uh, bale uh, Both of them look at HSCRP, C-reactive protein. And guess what? Paul Ridker, he keeps it simple. That's basically what he looks at, C-reactive protein. So why have others begun to add to C-reactive protein? Again, um, other docs are familiar with it too. Even docs that don't uh, know or practice or focus on inflammation do tend to understand that C-reactive protein is a marker for inflammation. Here's the problem with C-reactive protein. If I get the flu uh, this month, I can have an elevated C-reactive protein three or four weeks later and it not have anything to do uh, with, uh, it may cause some increased risk for my cardiovascular system and maybe it is a temporary um, increase in risk, but it's much more of a temporary thing. And again, it doesn't measure long-term uh, damage and inflammation so, so well as some of the other things do. Um, Brad and Amy, uh, Baildonine, they look at MPO, myeloperoxidase. I've got a video on that. It's, it's what turns uh, your mucus green. It's the um, enzyme within the, the pockets or the um, what we call vacuoles, the, the enzymes that are released by polymorphonucleosides, uh, white cells. If that's going on in your bloodstream, then there's uh, evidence of very significant cardiovascular inflammation. Uh, Bredesen's looking at albumin globulin ratio and overall albumin. You know, I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that the dementia uh, research for the most part over the past decade or so has been looking at proteins. Um, uh, things like beta amyloid and uh, tau protein, those are actually uh, beginning to look more like an outcome of this inflammatory process than a cause. But again, they're looking at, at that. Um, I think one of the most important indicators is microalbumin creatinine ratio. It shows um, chronic inflammatory damage to the kidney. Um, again, I've got um, separate videos on actually each, each one of these, LPPLA2, which is an enzyme released by the immune uh, cells, the monocytes. MPO is an enzyme released by um, polymorphonucleosides. Microalbumin creatinine ratio, again, is looking at actual inflammatory damage to the kidneys. Uh, uh, over here with Bredesen, he's, again, he's looking at other, other things, uh, IL-6, interleukin-6, tissue ne uh, necrosis factor alpha, now, uh, and omega-6-3 ratio. Now, what do we do? We clearly get uh, this basic, simpler uh, profile on everybody, then we start adding some of these other components uh, as necessary and um, indicated. And as, uh, we'll offer all of these um, as we do with most of our medicine. We advise our patients, uh, we educate our patients, and then the patient makes the final choice regarding labs um, and other uh, recommendations.
Again, it's been almost 10 minutes. Thanks for hanging in there. Bye-bye.